Okay. All right, so this is where we were at before, and we're just kind of looking at our margins. We want an undercut under your margin. That means you trimmed it right. We do have a little undercut on our, on our current prep, but that'll be okay. It's set at two degrees, so let's see what happens if we set it at one degree. If it'll show us less undercut. So it does show us a little less undercut, but that's just where it's at. All right, so, so we finished with that part of things. Now we're just gonna keep clicking next showing our margin insertion it's highlighted our margin line and our die interface you can see we're a little shy right here we're gonna re mark that and you can also just drag and double click and mark your line we'll zoom way in so we can see it a little better So right there, I'm too far. You can see on that cross-sectional view, I came over the margin and I'm down the margin. So we don't want that. Mm -hmm. So we just want to kind of click right on that margin. This is the nice thing about this software. You can just click right where that margin is. Again, we're past the margin over there. We're going to pull it up. Okay. That's kind of a little tricky area. Let's see what happens if I click way down here. So this prep actually looks like it has a little bit of a double margin. If we zoom way in close, we can see where our red line is and where the computer's telling us the margin should be. Let's just see what happens if we put it way over here. Yeah, it's telling us we're, we're low. Well, you can see that right there. This is mm -hmm. where the margin is. So it was marked wrong on the red pencil. So you just kind of click on your margin on the way around and it'll go correct it. So that's why it's important to get your red pencil in the same place because this does have color in it. And because that margin was kind of drawn in the wrong place, it took us a few minutes to get there. I think we're over there too. There we go. All right. So once our margin, once you've gone around and, and determined all of your margin directions, it's gonna ask you, your die interface. We're not really concerned about that part right now. We'll just go next. And it's always thinking down here in the corner. Now it's going to propose a crown for us. You can see it looks really close. Just kidding. It doesn't. Um, but up here in the right hand corner is where we toggle everything on and off. We can toggle our, our maxillary arch off and you can see how much is showing through there. So I'm gonna turn it back off here. We can also toggle on the contacts, how heavy our contacts are. So obviously very heavy. So we wanna make some adjustments here. Now, the other thing that I'm looking at is our smile library. This is a very defined crown and this is pretty plain crown. So we're gonna go back into the smile library. This isn't something you would normally do. And we're gonna click on these teeth and it's gonna give us, maybe, maybe, it's still thinking, I broke it. There we go. Now it's gonna give us our crown anatomy and we'll choose something a little more aligned with the adjacent teeth. Um, you know, we've got wear, worn teeth here. We've got some neutral teeth. We're gonna just kind of choose a little bit calmer tooth and click okay. And it'll repropose that tooth very high, but at least we've got a re repropose tooth. Now we're gonna close that and click on sculpt. These two tools help us figure out where we want that. And I want you to click on the single tooth tools. We're gonna click on the far left tool and that's individual transformation. This is where we can move our tooth. So this is gonna bodily move the tooth. We can bodily rotate the tooth. We can stretch one side of the tooth. We can stretch the other side. This is kind of both sides at the same time. So we wanna make sure that we're getting contact. Now I'm gonna go back and undo all those changes because I was just showing you what I was doing it'll kind of give us that view. Now we want to lower that tooth 
can tell our occlusion is not bright red and we've got a couple of little dots. Better. You can see if we look right here, we're hitting a little hard on our distal buckle cusp. So I'm gonna just gently rotate that just a little bit, rotate this crown just a little bit and kind of get it to where we're a little closer everywhere. So pretty close there. We've got some contacts kind of up at the cusp tips. We've got some contacts down the central fossa of the tooth. Um, now we're going to go to the next tool over here. It's giving us this green shell because that's where we started. Um, now this tool not coming up right now so the other thing you want to do is look at it from the buckle and the lingual surfaces you can kind of see what your contours are like and ours are pretty good it's really because we changed the design of that tooth a little bit if we wanted to make some significant changes we can keep going down here so this is our contacts button this is really gonna help us maybe if it comes up So this last button, let's see if this one will work. It's telling us what kind of occlusion we want from the prep to the interproximal. I'm gonna put this at 0.05 millimeters. If I hit the play button, it'll automatically extend that prep to hit within 0.05 millimeters. Now we want ours to actually contact the tooth. So we're gonna either put zero or negative 0.5. I would prefer it to touch than not to touch. So we're gonna hit that negative 0.5 and it should move our contact. Didn't. Something's going on with this one. It's a little bit frozen, hold on. So I don't like what's gone on and there's too many changes and it's messing things up. So I'm just gonna click on this reset design and it should reset the design. So that takes it back to where it was. Yeah, something's, something's <laughs> messed up. This, this green shell thing is supposed to disappear when so either are gonna have to do it again. Mm -hmm. So something's messed up, so we'll show you what happens there. There's obviously something going on. This green shell is not supposed to be there. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna close the system and we're gonna not save the design. That just takes up space on the dongle. When you are finished, you will save the design, but then it's gonna tell me my case is here and it's just like the original case it has saved all the steps I've done. We're just gonna kind of tell the system we wanna start over with that. So we're gonna come back in here and everything will be the same where I was. I can go back through them individually and redo them all or in the top bar here, I can click on what I wanna do next. So I'm just gonna click way up on insertion axis. And this is the margin line, it's telling us what it wants. Now it's insertion direction, which we've already established. Let's see if we can go next and have it not freak out. That's that margin that we were okay. playing with before. We're just gonna we're back to we're back to margin. I gotta fix that area a little bit. It's a little over contoured right there. Whoa, went too far. I may be close to running out of battery. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. We're almost there. Okay. If not, we can do this next time well it just messed up and i'm just trying that's to, okay 
I wanted to show them what it's, if it does mess up, you can always go back and kind of go through things. Yeah. It's thinking, it's gonna put us that huge chunky crown. Let's take that off. Too much anatomy. Actually, that's the one we chose and it, it's where we actually put it, so that's good. So what you're gonna do, go back to your smart tools over here. We're gonna extend until we've got contact. Extend and we've got contact. Now, some of those areas, you notice that we're, our marginal ridges are extremely high. So if we wanna change individual things on the tooth, you click on this little tool over here. This is the second tool. This is, it's called morphing tool. It grabs an area and just kind of pulls it down. So we can grab and pull until we get our marginal ridges about where we want them. Clinically, this one's a little low. Now we've got some funny anatomy back there. If we wanted to smooth things out, we can use this tool. This is kind of a wax knife tool. This is adding, subtracting, and smoothing. Typically, you'll just use the smoothing tool and you'll just kind of smooth out areas that you don't like or a little chunky or whatever's going on. We can turn our occlusion back on. And now we're a little high, so I'm gonna use that same tool and I'm gonna use the subtractive tool and I'm just gonna kind of click and drag over there. The other thing that you can do that we did before this is our contacts and smoothing tool. Our contact for our adjacent teeth, we have a positive 0 0.05. I'm just gonna hit that play button and it should take everything down until it's 0 0.05 millimeters away. So it's gonna be slightly high. If I say I take it down to zero, it's gonna reduce it further, just in those same exact areas. But that's way too much occlusion. So we need to reduce that. So there's three ways to do it. One is this individual transformation tool. We can lower the whole tooth, which I like, because it kind of gives us a better thing. But you can see how we've closed our contact areas and so we need to pull those out. So now I'm gonna use the morphing tool and grab that area and just pull it. Now it'll show us all of our occlusion. We can also turn off our, dot, our model and it'll show you the interproximal areas. You don't want to have any of these bellies. You got to smooth those out. So we're going to go back to that same smoothing tool, this one, and then we're going to go to smooth. And we're just going to kind of shrink our area that we're working on. So we're working on a little smaller area and smooth that out. We can take a little off. You can see that one's pretty straight, but it's got a little belly down here. So we're going to subtract some and then smooth some. Now, if we look inter, like on our interproximal view, we can see where our contacts are. We don't have any real bellies. This contact's heavier, so we're gonna smooth that out just a little bit. We may need to add a little bit of that contact. Do you wanna make sure this side, you can see it's kinda got a little belly on it that would go underneath our contact. We wanna fix that. I'm gonna morph it out just a little bit. Now we've got really heavy contact, so we'll undo that. We're just going to add with our sculpting tools, wrong button. This is our sculpting tools, our wax knives here. We're just going to add a tiny bit right there, right there, and then smooth. Smooth it out. Now we're going to look from the interproximal again. You don't want to see that belly. We're just smoothing and smoothing. So we can kind of turn it, there we go. Now we got a nice contact right there and we got nothing sticking out underneath our contact. Now our occlusion's a little heavy again. That's where we set it and there's some funny marks in here. So let's just smooth that out. We're already on the smoothing tool. So I'm just gonna smooth that out a little bit. We can always throw in our opposing arch. So it's showing you that it's close to contacting that opposing arch, but it doesn't look like it is. So that's showing us one millimeter of contact. If we want it to show us at zero, then that's what's contacting currently. Are you 
use that now. coming in so where do you want your contacts cusp tips central fossas we're gonna leave that for now we could add a little bit over there if we wanted to we're running out of time we'll go forward it's telling you that it violates the minimum thickness standard right there so because of that area it's asking you if you want to ignore it or if you want to just go forward we're gonna say, I would like to force the minimum thickness standard. This just means it's gonna add a little bit of material in that little defect area, and now we're done. That's our crown, it's all finished. It will mill out just like that. You can make it shaped however you like to shape it. Just make sure you're, you have contacts and your margins are defined. And then you go forward and it'll actually finish and have you give you an output model. If we were going to print a die that we wanted to check, we could also go forward into the system and it'll actually let you print a die so that you can try your crown on a die that's not your own finished die, but we're not gonna do that today. We'll just exit out of that. Because it's done, now we're going to export our file. Um, you right click, hit advanced, generate cam output. Then you go to advanced and explore cam and it'll show you your files. There's our crown. Okay. And we'll save wow. these and print them. Sorry, that was so long. That's okay. And then it's, you're saving it right now. Yeah, it's saved. So all, oh, okay. all we have to do now, when we figure out where we want it, and I'm not sure where that is, you'll 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 save this file to wherever they want you to so that you can print your file. So you probably have to come back in here so that we can print all of these at some point in time. Yeah, okay. But that's where the file's at. If you right-click and ex go to Advanced Explore Cam, it will show you the three files I think they send all these files at once, once they're done. Right, so for yeah. now, I don't know where they want them to save it, but for yeah. now, that's where the file is. Okay.